Welcome and thank you for watching this training video on the tips and tricks of the new EHR templates. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new template functionality. First, let's find a patient and go into that patient's charts. We'll right click and go to charts. This will take us into the patient charts module. Let's go ahead and click new. And let's go into the HPI section. The new EHR templates can be accessed from the history of presenting illness by clicking on this heading here. On the left hand side, we have our categories where we can expand and then choose the template that we would like to use. The new EHR template module works by clicking to activate a sentence. Activating a sentence will automatically highlight for you the options which can be clicked to include into this template. Here, in this chest pain template, we'd like to say that the patient presents today with generalized chest pain, which started, and we'll click on the time bracket, two weeks ago. The preview at the bottom will automatically show the text that we've added. To activate the next sentence, simply click on the next sentence and make your selections. It is gradual in onset, continuous, squeezing, tightening and burning in nature and a 4 out of 10 in intensity. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can make edits to this template and we can discuss some of the tips and tricks on how to optimize our use of templates. First, there are a few things that you should know. To add an item to your template, simply place your cursor anywhere in this text and write out a full sentence. Here, I've put in a full sentence without any pick list items. If I'd like to use this sentence, I simply click on the sentence and it will be activated as part of my HPI for this patient for today's visit. If I would like to add other items to this sentence to make it a pick list sentence, then I must use parentheses and a slash to separate my items. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. First, let me deactivate the sentence so that I can add items to it as part of a pick list. I will double click to deactivate the sentence. Next, I must use the directional arrows on my keyboard in order to move my cursor to the beginning of the word hypertension. If I attempt to click with my mouse, then I'll be activating the sentence because there are no pick list items. Again, deactivate the sentence first, use the arrows on your keyboard to move to the left, and here you can put in the open parenthesis. Go to the end of the word hypertension before the period at the end of the sentence and close the parentheses. Now the word hypertension will be a pick list item. Let's add other items to this pick list. Even when the sentence is activated, you can add other items into your pick list. Simply move your cursor with the directional arrows on your keyboard to the end of the word hypertension. Then place a forward slash, and that's the same slash that's shared with the question mark on your keyboard, and add another item. You can add multiple items to the sentence that will all be used as part of a pick list. Now, these three items are included as part of my pick list, and I can click to select each item. It's very important to remember that your pick lists will only work if you have a full sentence that has parentheses to separate your pick list items and a period at the end of your sentence. If you attempt to make a sentence that does not have a period, your pick list items will not be clickable. Here you can see that the EMR automatically handles the commas and the word and for multiple selections. Let's take a look at some of the other features of the pick lists and the templates. You'll notice that some sentences use a bracket for time. You can add this bracket for time in any of your new or current sentences that are in your templates. Here, if I'd like to document how long the patient has had hypertension, diabetes, and chronic fatigue, 
I can take my mouse, place it at the end of the sentence, and again use the directional arrows on my keyboard to move into that sentence. One thing you should know is that you cannot successfully update a sentence which has already been activated. Let me show you what I mean. If I attempt to add the time bracket in this sentence, so let's say the patient also presents today with hypertension, diabetes, chronic fatigue, which has lasted for, and I use my time bracket. If I attempt to add now the time bracket into this sentence, it's going to deactivate the previous part of the sentence. And if I click back and forth, I'll notice that I cannot have any one time both parts of the sentence activated. The best thing to do is simply deactivate the sentence before you make any changes. Let me show you what I mean. So if this sentence is active and I now want to add items to it, first I should deactivate the sentence by double clicking and now I can make my edits. I'll place my cursor inside the period and I'll begin writing the rest of the sentence, which has lasted for, and here I'll use my time bracket so I can choose the days, weeks, months, or years. And now I will activate the entire sentence together. Now you can see that which has lasted for is also activated as part of the sentence and it appears in my preview. I'll make my selections and I will choose my option for time, two months. Okay, now I have a properly formatted, complete, full sentence, which includes the new items that I've just added. Once you've made your selection for a specific sentence, you can go back and add additional items if you wish. Let me show you how this is done. Once you've fully activated all of the items within a sentence, you can still go back and add additional items. Here, use your mouse to place your cursor between diabetes and chronic fatigue. Here, since I already have a slash between these two items, I'll place my cursor after the slash and I will write out my next item. Again, I'll separate this item from its surroundings with a slash. If I want to activate asthma as part of this template, I can simply single click on asthma and activate it as part of this template. If I'd like to activate other sentences, I can simply click on those sentences and make my selection from within this list. Let's select the patient reports, dizziness, fainting, and unexplained fatigue. And maybe the patient also reports headache. Since I already have a slash, I will type out headache and add another slash. Now I can activate the word headache as part of this template. You'll also notice that there are other sentences that include an option for blank. If you activate a sentence that has options for blank, this allows you to simply choose the blank option and then update the preview directly. Place your cursor in the preview and click into the space where the blank existed. Use the blanks if you would like to free text a portion of the sentence without updating the global templates for that specific condition. You can also create sentences that have the option for a blank. For example, if you'd like to document here whether the patient has been a smoker or a non-smoker, let's go ahead and create a sentence that utilizes the blank option to document that. I'll go ahead and say the patient is not, or I'll also create the option for blank, and I'll close the bracket, and then I'll close my parenthesis. Now, you can see this sentence the way it's been properly formatted. When I activate the patient is blank a smoker, if I choose the option for blank, my sentence will read the patient is a smoker. If I choose the option for not, it will read the patient is not a smoker. Use the blank variable to create grammatically correct sentences that have only one selection. You can also add the blank variable to sentences that have multiple selections. However, if you select a blank variable sometime earlier in your entries, be sure to go back and update that section. Otherwise, you'll have incomplete sentences in your preview. 
Once we finish with our entries, if we would like to save this template and all of the changes that we've made to it, be sure to click the Save button at the top of the screen. Clicking Save will automatically format the entries that you've made in a proper way and save that as part of the permanent entries for this visit reason. Click Apply to apply your preview to today's HPI. Once you're finished with your entries, go ahead and click OK to preview that entry as part of today's visit. Do you have any questions about the training video that you just watched? Give our technical support a call. The call is free and technical support is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Thank you.